Hey guys, real quick before we get started, I just wanted to let you know this is my 100th video. We're quickly approaching 1,000 subscribers. That's a great goal. If you guys can just help me get there, that'd be awesome. I did pay for all these items with my own money as well, so I'm going to get that out of the way. And this is going to be a longer video, so I'm going to put some timestamps in the description in case you want to go to a specific part of it. Hey guys, it's Barrett with the Gimpy Camper. I want to talk to you about something that I like to do, and that's boondocking in the pitfalls that I don't like about it and how I made those better. Now when we go boondocking, we take our generator. And so we have a Harbor Freight 3500 Predator generator and it's been great so far. I've had one little issue with one. I did replace it under the warranty. I think it would have been fine. It was seemed like a fuel mixture issue. I just didn't want to mess with it and I had the warning so I just took it back because the warning was getting ready to expire. I'm going to do a thorough review on that eventually, but for right now I want to show you what I did to help save my back. So, inverter generators can be viewed as a couple of different ways here. You can get one bigger unit, and those weigh over 100 pounds, or you can get two smaller units to put together, and those are lighter and easier to move. But by being lighter and easier to move, it's also easier for somebody else to move and steal and run off with, right? And so I wanted the bigger one on purpose. Now, it does end up being a hassle whenever we take a trip because we usually have to, I got to get some help. I got to get somebody to help me load it in the truck. And we have to put it over the, the fifth wheel hitch and put it in the front of the truck. And we usually leave it in the truck. But that can be an issue. And quite frankly, I'm tired of my old back hurting. Okay? So this is what I did. So we decided to make our inverter generator an onboard generator. Guys, number one rule is you have to be safe when you do something like this. When these things run, it causes carbon monoxide to come out in the exhaust that can kill you and you may not even know that you're being exposed to it. So here's some of the things that I did to help prevent that. And then you have to do your own research and find out what you're comfortable with, okay? So number one, this runs outside of the camper. So you pull it out. Um, it does covered by this door here. It is covered by this door but you pull it out to run it, okay? And a lot of people just do that. That wasn't in my comfort level. I also, this project didn't go nearly like it should have. It should have been a two hour project and it ended up taking me about five days. We'll get into that in a minute in the voiceover. But in order to make it safer, I also extended the exhaust. So the exhaust that used to come straight out toward the front of the camper now comes out in this tube and down so it points away from the camper okay and then what I did is I also added a portable fan that's on a slide it just stays plugged into the generator so anytime that's running the fan will turn on but the way that this slide was built and the supports that I had to put in then it wouldn't basically it wouldn't stay in position all the time so I built it on a drawer slide and it just slides right out and it constantly blows out this way, that way to prevent any, any gases from going back toward the camper. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a carbon monoxide detector, not an alarm alone, but a detector inside the bedroom, which is directly above this. And when we run it, we're going to put this slide in because I worry about fumes coming up between the seals here. So this slide's going to be in when we run it for a prolonged period of time. One thing that we're going to go over with all this is that my plan A didn't work, my plan B didn't work. I got probably to plan G with all this stuff. And so we're going to go through the problems that I had. Hopefully that will help you avoid some of your own. So since the goal here was to get the generator slide out as far as we can, this step was there on the side of the slide out. So we had to fill that in with something. So we used the Craig pocket jig and some pocket screws to make a little step and platform just to fill in that void. If you don't know what pocket screws are, pocket screws are, are screws that go in an angled hole 
that are countersunk in the wood. It's a very strong point of connection there that holds the wood while you glue it together. This will give us the basic shape and support that we're looking for, but I wanted to do something to make it have a more finished look. So we thought we would do some upholstering over top of it. I found some carpet that kind of matches the tone of the carpet that was there, and I think it'll look pretty good. And I didn't think this would be that hard, but upholstering is one of those things that apparently you get better with at time, and my OCD just did not like it. Granted, it wouldn't have been any problem if it wasn't such an odd shape. The sides of the step, it was just hard to wrap that around and not have any extra puffiness on the sides. But eventually I was able to get something that I was happy with and it turned out okay. So once we had the step built, then we had to attach it to the trailer. So the way that I decided to do this was to put four lag bolts in the bottom and three pocket screws across the top. Now the lag bolts, I just set the step down, marked out where the sides of the step were when it was where I wanted it, drilled two holes right there, and then put lag screws through the bottom because it was just plywood. And thus far, everything is going according to plan, which is uncommon. Here we got our Morad tray, which I'm very pleased with the quality of that. Slid it into the area that we wanted to mount it and marked the holes where we wanted to put the carriage bolts. Seems like an easy process and it should be. I do want to mention that before I drilled the holes I did take the bottom cover off of the camper the night before and just take a peek at it and it looked like there was empty space there but looks can be deceived. In any event when you're drilling through the floor you want to make sure that you try to not go past the floor in case something else is there and you missed it which spoiler alert apparently you can guess where my black tank is. So I was trying to put the carriage bolts down and they just weren't going down in the holes like they should. The ones that are sticking up the worst actually hit the metal supports that hold the black tank up. This left us kind of grimacing and wondering if we actually punctured the black tank when we drilled through it. So we had to come up with some way to look. So I have a uh, camera scope. So we stuck the camera scope down in there and I'm just going to show you here that uh, you can see the top of the tank and there's no hole there. Woo! So after that catastrophe was averted, I thought, oh, we can come up with a plan B. Plan B is not that bad. Um, we can use a toggle screw or something like that, but the toggle screw couldn't be long because you couldn't stick it down in there far enough for the toggle to deploy. Well, I found these uh, anchors at Home Depot. And I thought they would work good, and I just got shorter bolts to go in there, but I couldn't get the bolts to engage with the anchors. And so on to plan C we go. Now plan C, what we ended up doing is getting a three quarter sheet of plywood that would be long enough to bolt this drawer to, but it would go back and you could bolt this plywood down behind the black tank. So all the rest of the bolts besides the front bolts of the drawer, I did use the carriage bolts on that because it went through my step I made, but all the other ones are just into this plywood. And it just happened to work out that the nut of the, and the extra length of bolt from under the plywood fit down into the holes that I drilled before since all the holes lined up for the drawer. So when you pull this generator out, all of the weight's going to be on this back area of the plywood. So I wanted to make it as strong as I could. So I decided to use three larger diameter uh, carriage bolts here. And I thought that that would give it a good chance with some really big washers. As you can see, my plan partially worked because these bolts did come out right in the middle between the gray tank and the black tank. However, you can also see that there's not any support for the floor there, so that's going to cause us yet another issue in a few minutes. So then it's time to pick that big old beast up and get it in that drawer. You know, that thing really is pretty heavy, and it was hard to get it in the drawer, not because of the space issue, but it was hard because of the top clearance because I don't have that much clearance when you shut this thing. There's about an inch there. And then since it took us days to get this far, of course we had to just test the theory out and see if it worked or not. And so this is the first time we actually you know, slid it out and started it with it on there. I was pretty happy that it didn't have any rattling or anything like that. But what I'm not happy about is you can tell that the floor is flexing up in the back and there's a little bit of movement there and my OCD just could not take it. So 
so that's another curveball that we're going to have to deal with here in just a minute or two. And if you've watched my video on changing the oil, you know the oil drains out the bottom of the generator. I'm not going to drag this thing in and out every time that I want to change the oil. So we drilled this hole with a hole saw. That way we can drain the oil out the bottom. I actually have a pretty neat project lined up to look at that, and we'll look at that closer in another video. My initial plan for both cooling and support was to mount this box fan around some supports, but I didn't work out mathematically. So instead I notched the bottom of these 2x4s because they ended up being right on the overlap of the plywood and I put a bolt between the shelf and the bottom of the 2x4 and I put a pocket screw in the top going into the aluminum as well as I added some L brackets to the top to give it more support. For the exhaust I just got some cheap 1 inch flex tube from O'Reilly's. Now the issue is, is it was too rigid I couldn't get it to tighten down on there so I had to come up with a better way to mount it. Apparently you can also use electrical conduit with a compression fitting, but I, did, I wanted something more firm than that. I wasn't sure if this was going to work or not, but I took this cutoff wheel and put like one and a half centimeter slots in the end of this piece of pipe to see if I could get a hose fitting to clamp down over it. That actually worked really good, but the only problem that I had when I started it up, it still wasn't rigid enough to hold in the same place, so I needed to make some sort of support that wouldn't be too much in the way. So without having a plan, I went down to the local hardware store, found some aluminum and some L brackets, and was able to make this uh, doohickey here, which seemed to work okay, but it rattled a little bit, so I wrapped it with electrical tape, which seemed to help most of that. During testing, I did notice that it slipped out one time, um, so I may end up having to put like a silicone strap or something over the top of it to hold it down on there, but I think that it's going to be just fine. And for the last piece of the puzzle, like I say, I just put this fan on some drawer slides. What I did was I used uh, three 2x4s and just put the drawer slides right on the middle 2x4. And it seems to work fine. There was enough room for that in the shelf. I did have to put a couple of screws in it because it wanted to tip over when you pulled it out. Obviously, there is better airflow there when the other side of the compartment's opened up. But I think that it still blows enough with it closed to prevent any gases from coming in there. And the last piece of the puzzle was strapping it down. The black straps are part of the, the drawer kit and they worked really good. The only thing is, is where they're located at for this application. One of them was right in the center of the generator, which is right where the exhaust is. So obviously that wouldn't work. I just mounted some eye bolts in the front and used the front straps to the eye bolts, which seems to be fine. The straps don't seem to be get too hot whenever the machine's running at all. Guys, once again, I want to thank you for checking out my 100th video. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.